my God, I got mammograms every year. Uh, why did they never see this? I couldn't believe I was already at stage four, a, a de novo diagnosis. I went in as stage one, and when I came out of surgery, I was stage, what I call WTF, but it was stage three. The clock stopped that day. I never thought that I could be diagnosed with cancer. My breast surgeon said that the tumor had been there for a long time. I had been diagnosed with this cancer I'd never even heard of. I didn't even know cancer came in types. Breast cancer came in different subtypes. I had stage two pleomorphic lobular breast cancer. Two months prior to my diagnosis and the mammogram was negative, my annual physical all went well. And two months later, I was diagnosed with stage three C lobular breast cancer. I discovered to my horror that my tumor had been growing for years and had been missed on mammograms. Had I gone in four months prior to my diagnosis, I always question, could I have, I have caught this cancer at an earlier stage? This is a disease that has a distinct clinical presentation. So for patients that were just diagnosed with breast cancer and diagnosed with an invasive lobular carcinoma, for instance, it's not uncommon to see patients coming to us saying that the lesions could not, or the nodule could not be seen by regular mammograms. And this is because lobular can have a distinct growth pattern and, and unfortunately, sometimes it can be missed by standard imaging. Uh, lobular carcinomas, greater than 80% of them harbor alterations affecting a gene called ecadherin, uh, CDH1. It is the very loss of ecadherin that confers the so characteristic lack of cohesion of lobular carcinoma cells that produce the so characteristic histologic appearance that we see down the microscope. These patients have a different type of metastatic progression when the therapy the, the fails. The ecadherin may also play a role in the way lobular carcinomas respond differently to the current mainstay of treatments for patients with breast cancer. If we had all the funding possible for to do research for patients diagnosed with invasive lobular carcinoma, there are two areas that are very important to me. One is uh, imaging for early diagnosis and follow-up for patients diagnosed with ILC. The other area that's very important to me is the treatment for patients who have recurrent disease. And I think that we need to work very hard and leverage all that we have learned in terms of genomics and think very carefully about how to tackle this disease and really go with a strong focus in making uh, treatments for patients diagnosed with recurrent disease better. As a clinician, one of the most compelling things that made me want to study lobular cancer was seeing how it affected patients with late stage disease and wanting to stop that from, from happening. For the longest time, it was mostly ignored in research as well as in basic wet bench research as well as in clinical research. Research for ILC on ILC just requires uh, funding. The more, the better. The reason for me to believe, and firmly so, that um, research dedicated to lobular carcinoma needs to take place. It is because a one-size-fits-all does not work for patients with breast cancer. We have to be able to individualize the treatment for patients. And how can we do that if for the second most frequent type of breast cancer, we don't have many studies and a real paucity of clinical trials looking at lobular carcinoma specifically. So understanding the right context for us to tailor the treatment of patients with invasive lobular carcinoma is essential. To focus at least some energy, both in the clinical trials arena and in the 
laboratory research arena, um, specifically on lobular breast cancer to see if we can better understand this entity. That that would not only help women with lobular breast cancer, but it would probably help women with ductal breast cancer as well, and might help people with other malignancies. Without a very focused, dedicated, and smart, and um, strategic approach to talking about lobular breast cancer, it's just going to get lost in the clutter. Without research, without funding for research, we will never find a cure for breast cancer and for lobular breast cancer. It is really only through more research that we are going to understand lobular breast cancer well enough for there to be targeted treatments and to eradicate it altogether. The Lobular Breast Cancer Alliance exists to raise awareness about this sneaky breast cancer subtype, provide information to individuals diagnosed or living with lobular breast cancer, and to fund desperately needed ILC research. LBCA works with a patient advocate advisory board and an international expert scientific advisory board. The Scientific Advisory Board helps us provide evidence-based and current information about lobular breast cancer that we share on our website and social media. It is also through our Scientific Advisory Board members that we participate in and help promote cross-country and cross-continent ILC research collaborations to generate more ILC-specific research and clinical trials. The Lobular Breast Cancer Alliance website is a wealth of information. For the newly diagnosed patient, there is a downloadable, frequently asked questions that's really valuable in talking with your medical team. The Lobular Breast Cancer Alliance can be a tremendous resource for identifying clinical trials. If you want to know the latest on imaging, the Lobular Breast Cancer Alliance has great webinars, articles, and even a research library that can give you this information as well as a wealth of others. When I was first diagnosed with lobular breast cancer, I scoured the internet for information and finally found the Lobular Breast Cancer Alliance website. LBCA saved my sanity. And when I realized how much more work is needed to raise awareness about this sneaky breast cancer subtype, I knew I had to get involved and I had to help lead this fight. For me personally, the Lobular Breast Cancer Alliance has been a labor of love, but also a real labor of need. I was so struck as a patient about the lack of information and the lack of appreciation for a patient's experience and drive and urgency to make changes in that. It really motivated me to make a change. For them to connect with uh, breast cancer advocates, specifically with an interest in, in lobular breast cancer, I think that's what will, what will drive progress over the next years. Studying lobular carcinoma as a distinct entity is very important for patients and, and I'm glad that LBCA is playing a major role in supporting research. I think the mission is so incredibly important and can be truly transformative for this group of breast cancer patients who did not have a dedicated group to support them in this most difficult journey. It's important to help organizations that represent cancer patients that are sustained because the patients themselves may go away. It has helped me with the information I need. That's why I became interested in joining the Love Love Breast Cancer Alliance to find out more. I'm greatly appreciative of all that the Lobular Breast Cancer Alliance is doing. This is not something any of us could do on our own. Let's say I do get a recurrence at some point in my life. I'm confident that LBCA will be able to at least be working on something and know that I will be okay and that many other women will be okay. The LBCA is doing what no other organization can do. That's why it's important and has to be sustained. The Alliance has helped us start changing the game.